Alright, in this video I want to talk about just some trigonometric identities and at least uh, how I remember them. So, uh, you know, there's some things I think you just kind of have to memorize. Uh, you know, the basic ones, sine, cosine, tangents, sine over cosine, cosecant is 1 over sine, secant is 1 over cosine, and cotangents, cosine over sine. Um, I kind of remember for like cosecant things are a little backwards. I feel like, you know, the the cosecant and the cosine should go together. So in my head, cosecant, it would be nice if cosecant was 1 over cosine, uh, but it's not. It's kind of backwards. So the co function goes with just sine, and then it's kind of the opposite. Uh, secant goes with the, the cosine. So I think uh, these people get a little backwards sometimes, but, you know, whatever. Okay, I don't want to talk about these. I want to talk about some other ones as well, kind of the more... Uh, you know, the ones you have to use to solve equations, things like that. So kind of the most basic one, I think, that uh, if, if people tend to remember one, uh, they remember sine squared plus uh, cosine squared equals one. And the idea is, again, the equation for a circle of radius one, the good old unit circle, remember that's just x squared plus y squared equals one. Well, for some angle theta, that point on the circle, we refer to that as cosine theta, comma, sine theta. Well, again, this point is sitting on the circle, okay? So that means that the x-coordinate is going to be uh, given by the value of cosine theta, and the y-coordinate is given by the value of sine theta. So all we do is we're just using the equation of our circle, x squared plus y squared equals 1, and we're just plugging in cosine for x and sine for y. So we'll get, well, cosine of theta squared plus sine of theta squared equals 1, and that's one of our very common identities. And again, typically people will write that as cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. Okay, so there's one of my, uh, you know, kind of first uh, fundamental identities. It's easy to get a few others from this, no problem. Um, if we take this identity, cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1, if we divide everything, say, by, um, let's divide everything by cosine squared. So I'm going to take cosine squared theta and divide uh, it by, well, cosine squared theta. I've got sine squared theta, and I'm also going to divide that by cosine squared theta. And then we've got 1 over cosine squared theta. So I'm just taking my equation, uh, my first identity here, and I'm just dividing everything by cosine squared theta. Okay, if we do that, well, cosine squared over cosine squared is just 1, anything divided by itself. This is really sine theta over cosine theta squared. Well, that's going to give us uh, our tangent squared theta. Again, sine over cosine is tangent, but again, it's being squared. Likewise, uh, we could write 1 over cosine squared as just 1 over cosine all being squared. Well, 1 over cosine, again, is just going to give a secant. So in this case, it's going to be squared. So we get yet another identity. We get 1 plus tangent squared uh, theta equals secant squared theta. We can do the same thing. We can take uh, our cosine squared plus sine squared. We can take that identity. And instead of dividing everything by, sine, or by cosine squared, let's divide everything by sine squared theta. So we'll divide by sine squared theta. We'll divide by sine squared theta. And we'll divide by sine squared theta. Well, again, cosine over sine, that's cotangent, but again, it's being squared, so we'll get cotangent squared theta. Sine squared over sine squared is just 1, and then 1 over sine, that's just cosecant uh, of theta, but again, it's being squared, so we'll get uh, cosecant squared. So there's another identity, cotangent squared theta plus 1 equals cosecant squared theta. Okay, so uh, again, just by kind of knowing 1, I'm able to get uh, two others pretty quickly. All I'm doing is just dividing, so, uh, you know, nothing worse than that. Let's look at some other uh, common identities here, okay? So there's an identity that says that sine of negative theta equals negative sine theta, so where does that come from? And likewise, there's an identity that says that cosine of negative theta 
equals, well, cosine of theta. And you may remember this from symmetry of graphs, you know, even in odd functions. Remember, if a function is symmetric about uh, the y-axis, so I'm just drawing some random graphs here, if we have a function uh, that's symmetric about the y-axis, remember we say that's an even function, and the definition of an even function, we say f of negative x equals f of x. And again, that makes sense because all that says is if you go over, you know, if you go over to some x coordinate, f of x is the y value. But if you go the other way, well, negative x, you're going to get the same exact y value. So that's all this condition says geometrically. Remember, if a function is odd, we say it's symmetric about the origin. So an example of a function that's symmetric about the origin, you know, maybe something like x cubed. And the definition there is we say f of negative x equals, well, negative f of x. And again, you can give just a little geometric argument as to why those are equivalent. Okay, so those are the definitions of even and odd. Symmetric uh, about the y-axis is even. Symmetric about the origin means it's odd. Well, let's think about the graphs of sine and cosine. Um, if you think about the graph, for example, of cosine, remember cosine of 0 is 1. At pi over 2, it's 0. At negative pi over 2, it's 0. And then we just get our normal little wavy function. Okay, so there's our graph of cosine theta. Well, cosine of theta is an even function. It's symmetric about the y-axis. So that means we can apply this definition. And all that says is, okay, so instead of f, well, now we've got cosine. That's our function. So we'll get this equivalent definition. It says cosine of negative x is going to equal, well, cosine of x. So equivalently, cosine of negative theta equals cosine of theta. And again, all that is, it's just a fact that you're using, uh, you're just using the fact that cosine's even. If you think about sine theta, so I'm being a little loose here, putting everything all over the place, uh, pi over 2, negative pi over 2. Sine of 0 is 0, and then, you know, it increases up to 1, and it goes down to negative 1 on the left. So if you've forgotten the graphs of sine and cosine, definitely want to look at those. Well, it turns out that um, sine of theta is going to be an odd function. It's symmetric about the origin. So equivalently, you know, it, f is kind of a just generic function. Now we're using the function sine. So it says sine of negative x would equal, well, negative sine of x. And again, that's our other, um, you know, our other identity up here. So this is just using the uh, even uh, the even definition, and here we're just using the fact that sine uh, is odd. Okay, so that's where those two formulas come from. So yeah, you've got to remember something else, even and odd. But uh, I think sometimes people just don't make this connection. Okay, so there's another nice little couple of identities that we can make use of. Okay, so again, just ways to remember them. Okay, so we're thinking about the graphs being even and odd. Let's look at um, a couple others here. You know, a very simple identity, if you think about in terms of the unit circle. Okay, suppose I'm at some angle here, theta. Well, again, on the circle, that's going to be the point cosine theta and sine theta. Well, if you add 2 pi to our angle theta, right, if we add 2 pi to the angle theta, it's just going to take us one full trip around the circle, and we're going to be sitting at the exact same location on the circle. So if we add 2 pi to our angle, well, I claim that we're going to get the exact same value. Again, you're just sitting... Um, you're just sitting at the same place on the circle. So that's the idea. Cosine of theta is going to be the exact same value as cosine of theta plus 2 pi. Okay, so that's going to be another trig identity. And likewise, sine of theta is going to be sine of theta plus 2 pi. And again, that makes sense. All it says is you're just adding 2 pi, so you're back at the same place where you started. 
So a couple of other um, a couple of other identities here that uh, I can remember again just by thinking about the unit circle. Um, let's look at two more. I guess technically four more in this video. We're not going to derive these. I'm going to show you how I remember them. But again, then I can show we'll show how we use these to derive a bunch of others. So again, here's two others that I just simply uh, I just know these. Okay, and here they are. So it says sine of x plus y equals sine x times cosine y plus cosine x times sine y. So I have very few mnemonics in my... Uh, uh, some people like mnemonics to memorize things. I never really used them much. Here's one case where I do use a mnemonic to remember this identity. I remember that sine is something notice something is kind of misspelled there sign is something that switches okay so why does that help me remember well okay we're talking about sign you know we're adding two things together x plus y um, usually you know we learn addition before uh, subtraction so I think you know x plus y that's kind of the first thing I would do Sine is, so if it starts positive, sine is something, some, you know, referring to addition. So what I remember is, if it starts positive, the identity stays positive. So there's my sum. If it starts with a sum, it stays with a sum. It stays addition. And it switches. It switches, uh, I have sine and cosine. Okay, so I'm kind of switching them out. And then I switch it yet again. So sine gets the x, cosine gets the y, but then cosine gets the x and sine gets the y. Okay, so everything's kind of switching and the sum stays in there. Okay, well, I remember likewise that if there's a minus sign in there, well, you just keep the minus sign as well. So this one little mnemonic helps me remember, well, I've got two identities here now, one with the plus and one with the minus. Um, I also remember that somehow cosine, let's look at cosine of x plus y. I kind of remember that that one is sort of like the opposite. Okay, and what do I mean by the opposite? Well, here if it started with a plus, it stayed with a plus. Um, here we start with a plus, and it's actually going to be a minus, so in that sense it's opposite. Um, notice too here the sine and cosine kind of play together, right? There's a sine and a cosine, a sine and a cosine. Cosine doesn't do that. It's going to stay, uh, we'll have cosine x, cosine y, so it's not switching, it's just staying cosine. And then we'll get sine x, sine y. So again, it's not switching, okay? So it's in that sense that I think of it as being the opposite. And again, since we're doing cosine of x plus y, I just remember, well, it starts with cosine. Likewise, if there's a minus sign, you know, you have cosine of x minus y, we'll get um, an addition sign in there instead. Okay, so that's how I remember uh, these four identities. Okay, that's my one little terrible mnemonic. Sine is something that switches. And then I just, again, I remember that cosine somehow does a lot of the opposite stuff. Okay, so um, I think we'll stop here on this one. Um, I'm going to do another video, again, kind of showing, in fact, well, how can we use uh, these identities, in fact, to produce a whole bunch of yet, uh, uh, a whole bunch of other identities.